on this edition of Ultrasound. Madonna takes us inside the making of her new album, Ray of Light. We're thinking of calling it Veronica Electronica. <laughs> that is one of my middle names, but you didn't know that. A little bit of Veronica, trivia. I know that. Okay. Know that okay. Don't get loud, yeah. Kurt. Ultrasound goes inside the studio. Kiss me, I'm dying. It's almost psychedelic. Yeah. Drug music without drugs. Gets inside her tour plans. And I want I'm you on stage with me. Thank <laughs> you. Inside the wonders of motherhood. Inside her spiritual journey. I think I have much more of a um, the joy of living than I, than I can ever remember having before. Inside Madonna. <laughs> How do you feel about it when you look back? I mean, just the effect you've had on music and on people's lives. Do you see it in a different way now than you did when you were undergoing it? I didn't have a clue. <laughs> right. I was just a little bunny hopping along. <laughs> Who was I? <laughs> Interesting way of putting it. And why did people let me have my hair like that? <laughs> For the past 15 years, Madonna has reigned as the chameleon queen of popular culture, shifting images with each new record, movie, and of course, that book. But in the four years since her last studio album, her life has undergone a deeper change, and it's not just a marketing ploy. Madonna's a mother now, that's one thing, but she's also become a student of the spirit, you might say. A one-time material girl, now grown all ethereal. And this newly illuminated state of mind is the subject of her extraordinary new album, Ray of Light. Is there like a theme about this album? Is there one central thing going on that you can catch glimpses of in each track? Probably self-examination or self-discovery. That's, I think that's definitely going on in every song. Yeah. But also, I think I have much more of a, um, a joy of living than I than I can ever remember having before. Love is a bird, she needs to fly. Let all the hurt inside of you die. I think I've always been on a journey, but I, I feel like I had like a huge, I don't know if you would call it a spiritual awakening, but I don't know. I think after I did Evita and after I had my daughter, my, my life sort of took a turn. And I just started to look look at life differently. And I realized how blessed I was. And before, I was just taking things for granted. Yeah. Probably what I started to focus on more than anything was living in the moment and enjoying each moment instead of going, oh, I just want to get through this. Oh, I just want to finish this record. I just want to finish this video. I just want to get through the end of this... I mean, if you do that, and if that's your attitude, then your whole life, if you look back on it, is just constantly waiting for something to be finished, rather than really enjoying the moment and saying, being in the moment. The new, more open Madonna invited us into the L.A. studio where she was recording the album with cutting-edge producer William Orbit, programmer Marius DeVries, and her Maverick Records partner Gaia Siri. The songs she previewed were clearly about spiritual connection, but the deeply charged electronic sounds she achieved just as clearly constitute a new sonic vocabulary in popular music. This doesn't sound like anything you've done before, ever. I mean, was, was that conscious? We want to do, like, some record that doesn't sound like it's ever... No, I might, my... my... No, my goal was to just work on a record that I wanted to listen to all the time. There are certain kinds of records that I always listen to. Most of them come from England, a few from France, and it's a certain kind of a sound. I can't describe it. And um, the only way to get, well, the only way to get that sound is to work with the people that make those records. So here we are. What has William brought to this project, Madonna? A certain brand of sort of madman type genius. Um, Crunch. Crunch bites, bubbles, chewiness. Oh. Uh, <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of bubbly bits. I can't really describe it, I and mean, it's not really anything. Well, it's very computerized, I would say. No. There's a lot of synth stuff, but there's actually a lot of a lot of electric guitar stuff. That, something I haven't used on on records for a really long yeah. time. <laughs> Did you yeah. play something for us? Me play? Does she play? Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> no, I... the guitar. Oh, God, please. Really? I don't if play. I had a hammer. Listen, all my... 
Really? All my ideas are in my head. Oh. I'm more instinctual. I just say what sounds good yeah, and feels good. So maybe that comes in handy. Because there are no rules. Now, what has been your uh, your your role in this album? Um, just helpful, helpful friend. He's the guy that comes in and like withholds all compliments. So like we play him tracks and he says nothing and leaves, and then we have a nervous breakdown. Have you killed any tracks outright? So just, this just can't go. No. No, but he's killed some goofy ideas. He really hates those icy strings. <laughs> <laughs> right when I think the track's done, he sort of pushes us uh, another step further and says, "Maybe you should try this." And I really don't want to hear that. And then of course it creeps into my brain, and then later on in the day I'm thinking, "Maybe I should have done a background vocal on that." And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't and I'm happy to report when it doesn't. <laughs> so I guess you guys were going to do Skin. Skin, right? That's the name of the song we're working on today. But I don't think we want to go with the harmony route right now. Did well, you change the name of that song? Yeah, I did. Huh. What was it called before? Never mind. <laughs> this is the Guitar Garden. Oh, now which one, this is where, which one is your, if I had a hammer or a guitar here? Listen, I really don't play the guitar. These are all Williams guitars. Oh. And he goes insane in here, okay? I know nothing about any of them. Mm. Right. We just put them through a marshal. That's all I know. Here's my, this is my little garden. I always, I always picture this being like an enclosed booth sort of situation, but well, I guess that's... sometimes they have that, mm. but I don't like that. Huh. You yeah. like accessibility. Do you have any effects on your voice? Uh, yeah, if you put my headphones on, you can hear them. Hello? Hello? Kurt? Kurt? You there? You hear the effects? I know you from somewhere. Let me start again. Do I know you from somewhere? Why do you leave me wanting more? When you come into uh, the studio for the first day, do you, what do you have with you? Tapes or? The first day? Yeah, you know, like the first day you come in and say, these oh, are the songs we're going to do. No, well, first I choose the producers I'm going to work with and I sit with them and I play all my songs that I've been writing. Why do all the things I say sound like the stupid things I've said before? I go and I write with different musicians and then... You have the lyrics, right? And you have the melody and... Mm, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I hear a snippet of music and that will inspire me. Sometimes I'll, you know, there's a couple of songs that I were sort of, I keep a diary and I write in it and I write poetry and stuff and I just take a snapshot of that and I kind of rearrange it into a song. Close my eyes. I close my eyes. Marius, that was wrong, wasn't it? Okay, go back. Did I do that wrong? This song I've definitely been writing as we go along. This was, we kind of saved this for last because it was very rough. Yeah. And it's been a kind of, I have an idea, then you have an idea. They put stuff on the track that inspires me. I lay a rough buckle down, yeah. they, it's, that inspires them. And today, actually, we really start getting into the real vocal arrangement. W was I closed my eyes in the right place? It was right? Well, if I sang the verse right, just pick it up right after our, the last, I closed my eyes. After we've been working and we have no inhibitions around each other anymore, we get a flow going. Then we kind of get into creating stuff. I'm not like this all the time. I'm not like this all the time. It's been really fun. I've never had so much fun really working. Yeah. I've never felt so free to experiment. Put your hand on my skin. Put your hand on my skin. Thank you, good night. It's almost psychedelic, dare I say. Yeah. Drug music without drugs. Yeah. Is that possible? I guess it None is. None of us are on anything. It? It's possible if you have really free people. Yeah. Because ultimately that's what drugs do. They free your mind and give you the feeling like you have, you know, mm -hmm. no inhibitions, you can go anywhere. Did you ever have a drug period where you did like LSD or anything like that? No. The classic nothing at all? No. Wow. No, I, I missed out on the whole drug thing. So you're just in touch with your inner whatever. My inner self? Yes. Well, I, I'd like to think I am. I mean, I, I've come a long way. I used to think I was in touch with my inner self, and then I realized that was my inner ego. <laughs> um, What's the difference? Because the ego is all, you know, gratification for yourself alone. Mm -hmm. It's not very much sharing and, and kindness. 
and so generosity. So is this having to do with having children? It has a lot to do with that. I mean, I think probably having her set me off on a new way of thinking and then just gone down a different road, period. And it was very good for me, too, because then the writing of this record and the working on it allowed me to be much more yeah. free and, and experimental. How cute are these shoes? <laughs> are these shoes cute? The last time we did an interview, I was showing you, you know, Manola Blahniks. Neurology? Could be. There's significance to numbers, you know. That's why Ray of Light, the third track on the album. How about the total number of tracks on the album? Thirteen, luckiest number of all. Huh. And this is your, this is like your thirteenth album, isn't it? Like. Ooh, I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do one more song or not? Let's do one more. Okay, yeah. let's, let's do Little Star. What was the inspiration for this? For which? Little Star. Lola. Oh. Otherwise known as Lourdes Maria. Ah. <laughs> it's my one super sentimental song on the album. Well, everybody should have one of them. Maybe. Exactly. She's, She's doing great. She'll be here later. <laughs> We always bring Lola in when we're, we're when we're like three cars away to do a song, and if she grooves to it, then we know we're we're in the right place. Is she pretty accurate about that? Oh yeah, she sits here and she sort of rocks out at the faders. Oh good. Does she, does she fool with the controls at all? That'd um, be interesting. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> No doubt, uh, your daughter has heard Little Star. Is it her favorite track? Do you think she suspects but that it's maybe related she, to her well, somehow? She, I know she's, she likes that track, but she likes other things, too. She really likes Ray of Light. Mm -hmm. She bounces up and down a lot to that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> would also that would be a song about obviously i imagine some new sort of knowledge some new sort of perspective um, it's about mysticism and it's about realizing how small my life is in the in the big picture and like what's happening to me but on the other hand how big it is yeah it's about wonderment it's yeah. about don't you think people lose their sense of wonder is that a human problem i think they a lot of people do yeah they lose their sense of wonder, they lose their their innocence, they stop asking questions, they stop being adventurous. Madonna started questioning the direction of her own life when she became pregnant during the chaotic filming of the movie Evita. Searching for some fundamental answers, she turned to the Jewish mystical tradition of the Kabbalah, which now permeates her life and her 13th album, Ray of Light. What is the rest of the, the album like? I mean, there are how many songs? 13, something like that? 14. 14. But I'll only put 13 on because 13 is a lucky number. It is? Mm hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. How is it a lucky number? 13 is the age when, um, that's why boys get bar mitzvah at the age of 13, by the way. That's the age when the soul gets completely, like, sort of sol solidified in your body. When you come into your own. It's one of those Kabbalah things. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, how did you become involved in this? Um, a girlfriend of mine go, used to was going all the time and um, to these classes, their classes, and she kept telling me about this really charismatic um, rabbi named Eitan who said told these great stories, and she kept going on and on about it. And I said, "Listen, I'm Susan. I'm not even Jewish. Why are you telling me these things? You know?" And she's like, "You don't have to be Jewish. Just come and take you know study. And if you they like it, well, you like it. If you don't, leave." So I did. I mean, the thing about the Kabbalah is that, that there's similarities in the Kabbalah, is, is, say, Buddhism, mm -hmm. the, the whole idea of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And for every action, there's a reaction. And, um, and that you absolutely are the master of your destiny and that, uh, that you have to take responsibility for the chaos in your life. Mm -hmm. You can't go around saying, oh, this happened to me and this happened to me and I'm a victim and this happened to me. It's like you pull in what you put out, basically. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have goodness in your life, then you have to give it. I know you grew up as a, as a Catholic. Do you, mm. 
do you see Catholicism in a different light now? Does it still have any meaning to you at all? Or Yeah. I mean, all religions have meaning to me, and um, I, I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for Catholicism. <laughs> but, well, I mean, well, there is a mysticism to Catholicism, but um, I just, I find that um, the Kabbalah and Buddhism and other religions that are, or philosophies that I've been studying sort of they're more adaptable to modern living, to modern to modern life. Um, one of the comforting thoughts about all of this, I, I, I feel that there's a lot of similar things going through Christianity and Judaism and, and Buddhism and it makes me think that at one time there was one thought. The word. Yeah, well I'll pass lead to God. With the Ray of Light album completed, Madonna summoned us to a sun-baked lake bed deep in California's Mojave Desert to witness the making of her video for Frozen. I think that there's a lot of magical, mystical powers in the desert. Mm. I think it's a magical place to be. It is quite haunting at night. Are you supposed to be a character of some sort? I'm a mystical creature in the desert. That's fine. Yeah. And I'm the embodiment of female angst. <laughs> you? Yeah! <laughs> That's, that's pretty yeah. funny. That's my stand-in, as you may have guessed. Yeah, she's been standing around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship with your stand-in at all? I never do. I try not to get emotionally attached to them because then I feel sorry for them. Because <laughs> they're always colder longer than me. <laughs> Let's go back because, you know, I'm getting a sunburn. Okay. I'm yeah. supposed to be pale and sort of have a death-like pallor in this video. Oh, yeah. No, don't say goth. No, the director won't like that at all. Masterminding the Frozen production was a gifted young Brit named Chris Cunningham, best known here for an unearthly Apex Twin video. I think she saw the Apex video and, and was interested and asked to see my reel. The truth is, is I, I probably became interested in the idea of doing music videos through seeing um, her videos, in particular her videos actually. There are a couple of videos that she did that I, I remember seeing and thinking, you know, that's brilliant. I remember seeing Rain when I was a bit younger and I I thought that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah really elegant. Are you ready? 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 Here we go, ready? How am I going to end up with the, on this, the next one? Roll, yeah. Just like spread eagle like on my stomach. Yeah. I'll stop in one of my yoga positions where it looked like a bone was going out. I'm not kidding, it would look really good. Yeah? It would! Yeah, let's do it then. Be open minded! Yeah, I am very open minded. Not! <laughs> By this point, you obviously, you can direct videos yourself, right? Now, as you know, Mariah Carey is directing her own videos. I heard she, she sneaks in at night and grinds the glass for the lenses. She's very brave. Yeah. It's, I would never want to direct something I was in. I, I just, I don't want to have to keep jumping back and forth. It's hard enough. I mean, I don't know how you can do both well. I really don't. I'm, unless, you know, you're just, you're a, you're a guy and you just don't care. You know what I mean? So guy-like. Because guys just don't care, let's face it. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> they don't care how they look. And in fact, they can look bad and get away with it. Mm. Not that you look bad. Thanks. Is the tour that'll inevitably follow this, I hope, uh, going to be a vast, complex undertaking? I haven't got a clue. Yeah, I'll, I'm sure I'll set out to do something simple and then it will become a vast and complex undertaking. I've imagined visual elements that I would like to have but I haven't like put the whole thing together yet. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. For sure. Is this like a major project to sit down and think what old stuff you might do on tour? I mean, None. Will you? <laughs> nothing at all? Well, I wouldn't say nothing at all, but I mean, I just can't imagine doing stuff like, you know, like a virgin and material girl and things like that. I mean, I, I, I don't know who that person is. She's a really sort of Neanderthal version of me. Really? Really amoeba, like, unformed. You look back on her as someone you don't like very much. No, 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 I, I'm very fond of her. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, this is what I mean about I didn't know the impact that I was, you know what I mean? I was just clueless. If I had known when I was doing those songs that for the rest of my life, you know, I was going to be referred to as... I'm the sure material I, girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just probably never would have done it. I don't even want to 
want to say Vogue. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm, I feel like that's like a hundred years away from me. So. I or do you, do you feel like you're like less sort of ego driven? I mean, or, look, 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 wait, I am not Mother Teresa. Okay. <laughs> I just songs are like they're like tattoos. You know what I mean? It's like you, they represent a, a time in your life, and if you've really moved on, it's hard to go back there and sing it with feeling. Can you can you go out on the road and just do the new album? I'd like to. I don't know if I could do that. Who would stop you? Nobody. Nobody. Well, yeah. Glad you asked that. Mm-hmm.